Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bella Gamer, and we're back with another wonderful archetype today. This one is going to be one from the adventure module, so if you don't want any spoilers for the Path of Thousands, I think it's called. Strength of Thousands, my bad. Strength of Thousands campaign. You might want to avoid this one for the time being, though it is lore-centric, and I don't think it goes too much in the spoilers, but today we're going to be talking about the Bright Lions. Before we get started with that, though, I just want to remind everyone, if you enjoy the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. We're doing all the archetypes, and soon we're going to be doing the tier list for the A and B archetypes, which I know a lot of people love those tier list videos. So I'm actually really looking forward to that one myself. And if you want something a little less committal, you can lurk on my Twitter in the description down below. See all the things that are coming up on the channel. we got lots of great things coming in the near future for sure. And if you want the chance to play with me and my friends, you can join our Discord linked down below where we talk all things tabletop, including things like Warhammer 40k. And as well, I always recruit there first for any of my games. So if you want to play with me and my friends, you know where to go. But with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the Bright Lions. So the Bright Lion dedication is a very geocentric kind of not geocentric but it's it has a very centralized theme you this dedication is dedicated to freeing the city of mizali from the grasps of the undead god king walkina which is a living god that currently is a little he's a little mummy boy and uh currently leads over the people of Mazali. It's a very interesting archetype because you are facing off against essentially a a little bit of African, a little bit of Aztec kind of feeling uh, characters. There's Joaquina themself, which is a god and undead, and as well as there's all kinds of interesting little bits of this. This dedication is dedicated to hiding amongst the crowds, impersonating a worshiper of Volkina and doing all kinds of grassroots kind of efforts. So let's take a look at the dedication itself. So in order to be a bright lion, you have to have access to or be in the bright lions, first of all, and you must be trained in stealth. Now it does say you for access, you have to have the background. I think this can be done in different ways. I don't think you need to have the background, but this is definitely a very you you're gonna if you're gonna be playing a bright lion character most of your benefits are gonna be working with you know mazali and trying to keep away from the forces of walkina so you need a campaign that's very much orientated towards that there are some cool things that we'll get into soon but let's look at what the actual dedication gives you and it says here that you become trained in your choice of either diplomacy or deception and Mizali lore. Now, if you took the background, you have one of those anyway, or both of those anyway, the lore and one of the two. And if that's the case, you become expert in them instead. Not only that, but you do not need to make any impersonation checks to impersonate a follower of Walkina. You can just do so innately and people won't suspect because you keep enough of their standard rituals and habits and general prayer in your daily life and you're you're essentially like a, a plant you're a spy you're a mole more or less uh, in the city of mazali if someone does scrutinize you for whatever reason you get a plus four circumstance bonus to the check which is really good and honestly is going to almost guarantee unless you absolutely muff it up or you're just really really bad at deception or you know, diplomacy, whichever you're using. It's it's definitely a really, really good beginning archetype, and it sets perfectly for the theme of the campaign. Honestly, this is probably one of the better ones that are thematic for a, you know, adventure path or for any games that want to run in Mazali. I, I can't imagine a better way of doing it because this is the perfect way to move without having to draw too much attention to yourself. But let's continue on to see what other cool feats that this Bright Lions get. Blessings of the Sun Gods is one of my favorite kind of feats. I absolutely love the domain spells that clerics get access to. And this feat in particular, just by being a bright lion, gives you access to either ambition, cities, darkness, dreams, family, fire, freedom, healing, moon, passion, 
or the sun domain initial domain spell. You also get a focus point and you become trained in the divine spell attack de- attacks and spell DCs at using charisma as your spell casting ability score if you don't already cast divine spells. Now this does not give you access to the cast a spell activity. So you can't use this to use divine, you know, items like divine staves or whatever, but you can use this of course to use the domain spells that you get access to. This is a really good thing for most characters, obviously, as it gives you a little bit more versatility. You get a focus spell that you can use pretty much every combat. Of course, you got to refocus to get your spell, your focus point back, but that's not too hard. There's a lot of domains here. There's a lot of things. You can have your character be a, a, you know, a cleric or even just an adherent to one of the old sun gods. There's a lot of different themes and thematics that you can do with this. You can set your character up to have a very strong reason why they're against Volkina and want to free the people of Mazali. It's a very interesting and very good feat overall. And I just, again, I love domain spells. I think they're all really cool and they're all pretty solid for the cost. They're There's some really, really good ones, especially in Sun and Fire. They have some really solid ones. Lion's Might is really good. It gives you some trained weapon proficiencies in some uncommon weapons. And this one's actually really solid because the Lion Scythe and the, what was it? The Sun Sling are both really cool weapons. The Lion Scythe is essentially a better dagger than most. Not only do you get Agile and Finesse, but you get the Trip Trait and it does a D6 damage. That actually is balanced stronger than most weapons because most weapons, if you've played Pathfinder long enough, you know that most weapons, the less damage they do, the more traits they get to make up for it, and the more damage they do, the less traits they get. So this one, typically a a dagger or, you know, any kind of, this is in the knife group, they get Three traits, usually it's like parry, disarm, or whatever, agile and finesse, and they do a D4. The D6 just makes this weapon generally better than a lot of daggers. It's very solid, and not only that, but if you're a fighter or a gunslinger, this increases the proficiency of your lion sights and the sun slings, which we'll get to here in a second, to the same level as your chosen weapon or firearms, depending on which one you are, meaning you have additional weapons that you can use at your highest weapon proficiency. That is absolutely amazing. It makes these really good on those characters. And honestly, even if you're like a cleric or a spellcaster who needs, you know, who wants extra melee weapons to add to their repertoire, This is a really good one. The Sun Sling is actually a really cool weapon as well. It's kind of like a lacrosse kind of uh, implement. It's a one-handed weapon, but once you load it, which has a reload speed of one, so you have to take an, uh, an action to reload it or to load it up, but you put the sun, the sun shot, yeah, sun shot in, and then you have to wield it in two hands, and then you can sling. It has 20 feet, and it has propulsive which is really good if you have a strong character and concussive so the shots normally do piercing damage or bludgeoning damage either way it doesn't really matter their damage counts towards both for the purpose of bypassing weakness or bypassing resistances and applying weaknesses concussive is a really really good trait to have on a weapon in general and the sun sling is a really good item that you can use one-handed and then implement when you actually want to fire a shot. I think this these both weapons are really, really good. And not only that, but they're both uncommon. Unlike something like the Bounty Hunter that gets some of the standard martial weapons in it, this works for all characters, including martial characters, because it gives you access to uncommon weapons. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, sorry, sorry I, I totally spaced. The Sun Sling does a D8 damage and has a range of 100 feet. That's a really good weapon overall. I, I'm sorry to just like mention this out of nowhere, but that I had to bring that up because that's a really real. The Sun Sling's a really really good weapon, and one I never knew about before looking at this feat. So definitely, this is a really good feat. Warding Light is a very interesting one. It gives you access to the Light Cantrip as an innate, as an innate spell to your character. And I don't know a lot about Walkina personally. I know Walkina was essentially this this mummified 
you know, heir to the sun gods, child of the sun gods or whatever for the culture, and was put into a museum. And then when Sargova, Chiliax came to invade Mizali, Volcano woke up, fended off the invaders, and then enslaved the people of Mizali. So I don't know a lot about it, but it says that light and such is supposed to help fend off the minions of Volcano. So I don't know. Volcano also has sun as one of their domains. So I find that very strange, but light cantrip, it's good. It's helpful if your character doesn't have dark vision. The interesting thing about this is if your character dies, you automatically cast gentle repose heightened to the same level as your light cantrip. So overall, it's thematic. It's very interesting. I don't see a lot of use in it, honestly. It's the, under the expectation your character is going to die. That might make it good for a very particular style of campaign, a very grim, dark one where you're fighting against a force well beyond you and you're going to die, but you got to get your mission done. I think that's really good for that kind of feat. But I think in general, this feat doesn't really add a lot to the characters other than some cool narrative that may or may not come up. And I mean, again, light cantrip is cool. It's hard to get can access to some cantrips. So, you know, I say it's an okay feat. Sun's Fury is a very interesting one. It gives you access to another focus spell and another focus point. And the Sun's Fury focus spell is pretty interesting. It allows you, as long as your weapon does not have the unholy rune on it, it allows you to get an additional D4 fire damage and deal one additional good damage. And it makes your weapon glow like a torch for, I think, what is it? One minute, I want to say. Yeah, one minute. And it can be on any weapon. Now, this isn't a rune. This is a additional effect. So this actually stacks with other runes you have on your weapon. The only rune it doesn't technically stack with is the unholy rune, which prevents you from even using this ability on it. It's a really good focus spell. It adds extra damage to your character and that extra good damage can damage some evil entities a lot as there's a lot of evil fiends and such that have a weakness to good so overall sun's fury pretty good feat i really like it personally and again more focus points more focus spells what's not to love elude the divine is very interesting and depending on the style of campaign that you have this feat could be really good it just depends on how often you're planning on or the gm at least is planning on you getting interrogated by the forces of Walkina. But this one is pretty decent because it gives you access to slippery secrets, which normally you have to be a master in deception to get access to. This does not have that same requirement. What slippery secrets does is for anyone trying to cast a spell on you to see if you're lying or to detect your alignment, you can use your deception DC as a counteract. I think that's how it is counteract let's see uh you can attempt a deception check against the spell effect or uh spell or effects dc and if you succeed they get nothing from you now this also works uniquely on divination effects some divination spells like the ability to you know detect what god you may have or maybe to read your mind in some way this allows you to make a check against even those and if you get a critical success, you are able to lie, essentially, and they'll read that you're like a follower of Walkina, which is a pretty good effect and is very situational for the campaign, sure, but you do get a plus two circumstance bonus against the divination effects, and it's just one of those kind of feats that I feel like can work really, really well and can be very major based on the kind of campaign you are. This one is definitely one to take if this is the style campaign that you're in. And even if not, it has some interesting story implications that I think really is up to your DM to make the most use out of to make your character feel cool. Because I feel like the ability to lie to even spells that detect lies is amazing. Lion's Fury is amazing because it gives you the critical specialization effect for the Lion Scythe and for the Sunsling. 
both really good and honestly there's very few feats in the game that just give you critical specialization in fact most classes have stipulations on how they can even apply the critical specialization for weapons they have access to this just giving it to you for those two weapons at the very least is incredibly solid and works really well especially if you're playing a class like the gunslinger for instance that normally only gets critical specializations for firearms and crossbows now fighter i believe gets her critical specialization specialization for any weapons that they have master proficiency in i might be wrong on that one regardless this is a really good feat to pick up overall especially if you're a martial character the last feat in the bright lions is greater sun's dedication or greater sun's blessing greater sun blessing my bad and what it does is it gives you the advanced domain spell for the prior domain you picked from the earlier uh old sun god's blessing it's really good, and not only that, and I didn't mention this before, you can actually select both of these feats multiple times to get more advanced domain spells and to or to get more domain spells and more advanced versions of those domain spells. It's really good overall, gets you more spells. Honestly, I love this. It gives your character a lot more viability. Even if you go beyond the normal focus point limit you have in number of focus spells you have, it just gives you a bunch of tools. And if you're using the free R-type dedication bonus, which... No, I think everyone should. I think this overall is a very good set of feats. And the Bright Lion dedication overall is very solid. Is it very thematic and is it very situational? Yes, I'll agree. I also think some of the feats work well with other kinds of characters and can work in other campaigns. I mean, just getting access to the Lion Scythe, Sun Slang, or Domain spells are good everywhere. It doesn't really matter. And the critical specialization, yeah, there are some for particularly dealing with Walkina and Walkina's forces, but I don't think this archetype dedication necessarily needs to be restricted to that. Now, obviously, your character is a bright lion and needs to be working towards those goals, but they might be going on an adventure to find something to help fight the child sun god. So, I think overall, this dedication is really good. It's got some really good benefits, and honestly, it gives you some really strong tools. I think the bright lion dedication is probably one of the better dedications especially for one so focused in a single ap I, I i i like this one a lot so that's gonna be it for bright lion a little bit on the longer side for this video but overall i think the bright lion is really good and i think it can work in a lot of games and it can speak a lot about your character's personality where they're from adds good combat bonuses as possibly good utility bonuses for exploration and all that kind of stuff it really just depends on how you work it and so honestly this is a pretty like a ranked archetype dedication in my eyes but with that we're gonna go ahead and end it here i hope you all enjoyed please like and subscribe if you did thank you all so much for watching good luck with your games leave the button like to me and i'll see you all next time bye